Okay, Chair, we are, uh, we're now online. Okay, thanks, Ben. Um, so welcome to the East Strategic Neighbourhood Forum uh, 2023. Um, can I just first of all welcome uh, new members to the um, to the uh, to the forum, um, Christine Beardmore and uh, uh, David Tilbrook as well, if you um, who um, were elected in May. So congratulations to both, and um, welcome back everybody else. Um, Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry. That's, I think that's me hearing impairment going uh, going crazy. I, I also probably try to avoid what, uh, listening to what Christine says on occasions, you know, so it's probably a bit of a hangover from there. Um, can I just um, take apologies? Yes, Joe, we've had uh, uh, apologies from Councillor Billington. Brilliant, thank you. And um, can we um, agree the minutes for... Um, Oh, sorry, what I should have said was that if, if we have um, people watching the, the um, webcast, um, if you want to put questions to um, to the panel um, or uh, on particular items, you can get the link via the web um, web page and uh, Ben will do the admin on our side and let me know what's, um, if there are people asking questions. Um, so item two, the minutes from the last meeting, which were held in um, March. Um, can we agree them as a correct record, first of all? Agree those, Chair. And can we also, um, can we also uh, ask anybody if they have any, anything they want to raise from the minutes from the last meeting? No, in that case, we'll move swiftly on to um, item three, um, items for future meetings. Um, uh, I've, uh, we've had a lot of discussion on the, um, on the forum over the years about how these meetings should be conducted. And I, I, think, we, we, I think there's a general agreement that um, they're not working as well as they might and that we need to include more local content um, within the meetings to make them more relevant to the areas that we, we're um, representing within this um, forum. Um, so I, to that effect, um, before um, accepting chair, chairmanship of the uh, group of uh, the forum, I did ask um, Councillor Cooney whether we could move in that direction and then reiterated that in a note I sent to him on 24th of May. Um, um, Chair has then had, a meet, ha had, I think, a discussions with officers, uh, which has then resulted in um, a, a sort of more expensive forum uh, for, format for the forum. And a starting process for that is to sort of discuss now, very, um, you know, within the next 10 minutes, if we can, um, what items people would like to see going forward for future meetings and maybe a bit about the the, um, the format of the meetings and um, any other issues you want to raise at this stage. Um, can I ask somebody to uh, to kick off with any ideas they have for how they, how, how they want, to, what sort of things they want to see on the meetings agenda, first of all? I can see that uh, Councillor Jackson has her hand raised. OK, Councillor Jackson. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I welcome the fact that we do need to make it more localised. I think there's lots going on in Staley Bridge that uh, we would be interested and passionate to talk about. And I really do think that we do need to... Um, strip it back and just make it about Staley Bridge. Each neighbourhood has its own identity and its own needs and demands. So I do welcome that. Um, one, one thing I would like to suggest and request that we go back to a neighbourhood in person as opposed to on Zoom. 
I'd really, I think the whole concept of neighbourhoods was to be public facing and to allow them chance to see us visibly. And I'd like to go back to that model. Um, I understand there was restrictions during COVID, but we're out of COVID now. We're encouraging more people to come and work in the workplace as opposed to working at home. And I just think that uh, we need to go back to that. Thank you. Uh, I, I would tend to agree with that point, um, Jan. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't like to be leaving out our good friends from Mosley and um, Duckingfield, though. Um, so uh, it, it's it's how we manage the issue around um, uh, is, um, sort of issues which affect specific towns and not the whole area. So maybe we need to have a think about that. Um, but Ben, can we can we put it back to you that we uh, to take it away to, to for consideration? I don't know how we do this, but with uh, the, so that the meetings become live, um, uh, you know, in person rather than um, uh, via Zoom or whatever. Certainly, Chair, I can feed that back uh, from this meeting. OK, we all will take that forward. Um, are there other points that people want to raise? Uh, Adrian, I've, I've got my hand up. Um, yeah. It was just basically Jan, Jan took the, the, the oxygen then, but um, I don't think she meant it deliberately, but you're quite right to pick up the fact she just said we all went aware about Staley Bridge. Um, <laughs> we, do, we do want to know massively what's happening in Mosley, how they're being affected, and Ducking Field. So that goes without saying, but I don't think she meant that. Um, the, the, the other thing is that we do need to do it in person. That was my other point. So not to, we, 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 and we need to spread them around like we used to do. So that yeah. we've got Duckingfield Town Hall, which is a great venue. We've got Staley Bridge, which is a great mm. venue. And we've got Mosley's George Lawton Hall, all great venues. That's how we need to do it so we can bring all the communities with us. That's all I want to say. Brilliant. OK, I mean, I, I think I welcome that, Dave. And um, again, maybe it's something that you can help feed back through the um, cabinet as well. Um, Can I we'll just say, we can't, yeah. I just say, Chair, that it might be a difficult to a venue Staley Bridge Civic Hall because of the um, obviously the work's been undertaken. But as Councillor Sweden said, we've got Greenfield Town Hall and we've got George Lawton Hall. Yeah, yeah, and if we're getting quick, we might be able to um, possibly use a Civic Hall, mightn't we? I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll we'll take that one away, and we can we can work on that. Um, are there other issues that people want to raise? Chair, you can't see me, um, and I can't raise my hand through the app. So, can I come in, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. I've had to download a new app, new Zoom app today. I don't know why, oh, and uh, I can't find a, a hand on it. Um, I, I think all the points have been validly made. Um, once again, we, we discuss it every year, don't we? But public engagement is yeah. a, a fundamental aspect. It's, it's the only opportunity, well, one of the main opportunities, neighbourhood forums for the public to get involved. And uh, since COVID, I just feel, um, you know, that's... Um, um, that's reduced significantly. So yes, back to face to face, and also back to like um, public questions, or you know something towards the end where where the public can question us, or pub the public yes. can question the officer in question, depending on what we're discussing. But that that I think would be really um, uh, useful in getting that level of engagement that we need. Um, as you say, you know, we're we're the visible face of the council. Yes. Uh, we're you know we're, we're to be held to account. Um, that, that level of gain, we need to go back to that. Um, also, uh, we've had, um, I think, a really good report from the police recently, so if we can continue with that. Police yeah. issues, it's all the same things we've discussed in the past, yeah. so, you know, any... Yeah issues affecting um you know like for example in mosley you know we've had flooding in the past yeah that's going to be an ongoing issue uh climate change is going to be an ongoing issue it sounds quite um like if you say climate change it sounds like it's got nothing really to do with us. It's, got, it's got everything to do with us and it's got everything to do with us here in mosley and staley bridge and ducky Absolutely. so um you know how that's affecting um us and then um 
you know, even things like uh, the education, anything in particular, we've got education, white paper, the reform, and any anything, um, you know, that is happening at, at this moment of time affecting us this year, um, that's um, happening in the present time needs to be brought to the forum, I believe. Yeah. Any particular changes affecting our communities. Um, I mean, we, we have had it in the past and we've had papers, but we definitely need more discussion. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with all of that. Um, tough um I, I i you know at the end of the day you know on the climate change stuff um you know we have got sort of you know canals and rivers that which link us which are fundamental um you know in terms of all sorts of issues which are affected by the climate change and we've issues around um you know the green corridors and all sorts of things which we can um talk around in that respect and as you say with education you know, there's particular slants on uh, on education, isn't there, with our different areas. So, that, that I think, you know, that that, that gives a lot of um, food for thought, I think. And also, uh, going back to the old um, format of um, questions to officers, that always used to be good fun, didn't it? So, I think that one, that 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 that, that sounds like a, a you know a, a, a something we can look at as well. Uh, have we had any other people want to contribute? Uh, yes, we've got Councillor Beardmore with her hand raised as well, Chair. OK, Councillor Beardmore. Can you, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, again, I'm a new, I'm new, so um, I'm hoping this isn't going to be totally wild. But one of the things I noticed was that um, the Community Innovation and Safety Fund, which covered our area, but it wasn't brought to the uh, neighbourhood forum. And those sorts of things, I think it would be really useful to have an input into. Um, I know it was a, they had a, uh, something in the community which was good, but I didn't feel, I felt that that was perhaps something that the forum should have looked at when you're giving, giving money away. And also another point is, um, I believe you're on the um, enforcement panel chair. Yeah. And I think it would be really useful for us to get uh, a feedback from that or even to input into it via you. And so I think that, that those two, two aspects would be uh, quite useful to, for the forum to look at, really. Yeah, I think that, that, that makes a lot of sense. and. Um... Councillor Dickinson's also on the enforcement panel, so we yeah. can, you know, there's, there's a sort of couple of us can uh, sort of have feedback directly on, on, on that. Chair, can I just come in, please? Yeah. Um, yeah. On the enforcement panel, as you know, uh, we it is um, enforcement for everything that mm. you know, from um, planning to people, um, neighbourhoods not doing what they should do, whatever. Um, and we have been told at that panel that we, we should um, liaise with our constituents and people and bring things to the panel. So you're quite right, uh, Councillor Beardmore, um, that th they need feed, they need us, the uh, Councillor Pierce and myself, to feed in. Um, and we can also feed back as long as it's not prosecutions, because that prejudices yeah, yeah. cases. But we can we can feed back anything else. Yeah. I, th I think there are, there are issues that affect all of all of the yeah. areas. So yeah, I think it, that would be really useful. And if people have got, dare I say, ideas about how to deal with certain things, I think we can, it can only benefit everybody, really. I totally agree with all that. So, um, yeah, I think that's a, you know, that that could be almost like a standing item. I, I don't know. We could we can talk about this um, and how it might be structured um, uh, after the meeting. Ben, um, uh, my, my other thought was um, uh, uh, regarding um, items and uh, uh, specifics. Was um, we've got the family hub now established. Um, in on Ridge Hill, which covers um, Ducky and also Staley Bridge and Mosley. So, again, you know, that might make a good item for some uh, publicity for what they're doing, but also to, um, 
to to see how we you know to see to monitor what they are doing as well so there's the, the, the certain things like that which um would, would fit into it um is there any other points we want to make yes okay. just say that just uh, I mean, it's been pointed out that members who are speaking who don't have their cameras switched on aren't showing up on the feed. If if members want to speak, would they be able to switch their their cameras on because they're not appearing on the feed if they don't have the camera on? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, Chair, can I just add? Yeah. Um, uh, can I just put something in that what as long as everybody's still breathing after me taking away the oxygen? Um, can I just? <laughs> can I just? ask that we used to have now I'm not saying that the old model of DAs and neighborhoods yeah. was perfect I'm not saying that at all it was very what, good Jan I thought it was actually <laughs> I thought it was Dory but what, what who we did have there was some some uh, police uh, when yeah. we could get them shift dependent and we had someone from the fire service i mean these are our emergency services that are, are doing more than just putting out fires or arresting people so i think them being invited um to the neighborhood would be good and also we had youth representation as well now i don't know you know i i, I just think that neighborhoods have to be inclusive of all generations and youth do have a, a key stake holder they are part of our neighborhood yeah. um and we need to have them them being invited or have something to attract them to come thank yeah. you yeah no, um Anyway, I, I, I can tell that um, Councillor Dickinson, you haven't you, you, the option hasn't gone from there, Jan, yet. And uh, I think Christine's <laughs> all right, but I'm not sure about the rest of us. But um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I, I think that's um, that's some really good points. And I think I don't know if you have you managed to get all that down, Ben. Uh, all these different ideas. I have indeed, Chair. Yes. Excellent. Well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll try and formulate that into something or other after the meeting and put it into a sort of structure and see what we can do with it um uh, is uh, was there anything else that anybody uh, any member wanted to say uh, if i can come in again chair yeah yeah i mean this is a, a bit of a wacky one but um in at, in luton borough council i was a councillor there in 2011 to 15. so there they used to have area board so a bit like a district assembly which, which i believe yeah was gone when I joined in 16 in Tameside. I think it was the last year um, for that, but it was area board and it sounds like it was a very similar thing, but one of the things they did there just before the area board was to have everyone do their ward surgeries and that would bring in the public and then go on to the area board. So when they had any particular questions, it was dealt with in the ward surgeries and then there was a topic of discussion. So that it's just an, just an idea. I don't think it'll happen in Tameside, but that's what, I mean, it's, it's worthwhile looking at what other uh, towns are doing, other yeah. boroughs are doing as well. But I, I recall that being a good model as well, where all the councils had their ward surgeries, people attended that and then but I, but, I, but then again, yeah. I'm thinking about that. I can see the uh, geographically it might not work out because obviously if we're going to hold it in um, Ducky, for example, or, or and the next time in Mosley, mm. or then then Staley Bridge, not everyone will want to you know will want to move on to there um, in terms of ward, ward yeah. surgery. So it was just a little thought I had. No, I, um, I think there may be general themes that come out though, Taff, which you know uh, it, there, there'll be certain things which. Um, you know, happening in Stady Bridge and Mosley and Ducky, or, uh, which we can, if they uh, recur in, uh, you know, regular intervals and often enough, we can, um, you know, they, they will sort of form a, you know, a, a, a make, it would make some sense to, to raise that through this forum, wouldn't it, after them coming through the ward. So, yeah, I can see how that could work. Um, I, I was just going to ask before we move on, um, it, of, of any of the officers that are, are present, um, just whether you have any comments, really. You don't have to, it's not compulsory. So, um, could I come in? Alice yes. has got her hand raised, Chair. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thanks, Ben. Count, thanks, Councillor Pierce. Uh, Ali Stathers Tracy, Director for Children's Services. Yeah. Um, 
I think just in terms of the, the, the reference that you made to family hubs and the activity yeah. that's going on for children and families locally, absolutely, that's absolutely core business for us to bring. So um, an offer to bring that work um, through to you. I think there's two agenda items on today, which is around our fostering and also about the innovation that we've brought through the yeah. SHIFT programme. But more and more, the work that we're developing in children's services is going to be managed on a, on a neighbourhood footprint basis. So I very much like my officers to be able to come and speak to members about the work that's happening, um, some of which we can share, some of which is sensitive, obviously, in terms of the nature yeah, sure. of the work, and you'll understand that. But um, absolutely where we can, uh, we'd like to bring that forward. Um, and also the work that we want to do around um, special educational needs as it pertains to individual areas. I'm sure uh, neighbourhood committees would be really keen to understand what that is and how they can promote diversity locally. Um, very important for our children and families. So, yeah, just wanted to say that, that we're, we're absolutely no, happy no, to bring I, I welcome uh, information that. that forward. Um, I think that's really positive. And, um, you know, we, uh, I think it would, um, it, it would really... Um, a be, it could be a very good forum for for sort of swapping ideas and experiences so yeah no thanks for that okay chair uh, okay i'm not chair i'm the chair aren't i um, um okay ben have we any 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 further hands raised uh, we don't know just a comment from council lane just echoing um yeah sure that point regarding um the involvement of emergency services and young people yeah uh, from Council Lane, you say? Yes. Yeah, Jackie, do you want to come in? Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure if she's, she's still in the no, meeting. Okay. Right? Well, uh, well, I can follow. We, I'll follow that up um, after the meeting, perhaps. Okay. Well, thanks for that. I think that's been very useful. Um, uh, well, I'll talk to you, Ben. You know, after the. Uh, um, in the next few days um, and we can put something together and see see what we think it looks like and um, see what we need to do to progress um, progress this but I think that it does have the bones of a, a really positive way forward that so thanks for that. Um, item four um, household support fund and I think um, uh, Emma you're talking to this aren't you? Yes, if you, um, I'll just share my screen if that's okay. Um, uh, I'll just, I hope to go from the beginning. Um, can everybody see that? Yes. Yes, Great. yes. thank you so much. Um, so my name's Emma Varnum. I'm the Assistant Director for Operations and Neighbourhoods. Um, um, for Tameside Council. I'm giving you an update on our um, current household support fund, which is tranche four. Um, we've in rounds one to three, um, primarily um, the funding that we were given was support families and um, children who are eligible for free school meals. And we were able to support um, their holidays as well, which is excellent. Vouchers were provided by the schools to eligible families ahead of each holiday period. And um, following the guidance that we had, um, an application-based scheme was available for low-income families. Um, and it supported things like um, some basic um, food and energy, but also some related essentials like fridges, for instance, or mattresses. Um, now, the Household Support Fund um, has been going since October 2021, and we've just given you a sort of summary there of the amounts of money that we've had available. And we've now been um, given, uh, we were given notice that we have a 12 month um, allocation of money. Now, um, you may say, oh, gosh, why are you telling us about it now? But actually, when we're given notice of how much we are um, going to be allocated, it takes a while for the guidance to come through. And we've been taking the, um, uh, the way that we are going to approach this tranche um, 
um, through our governance processes. And we've listened to you as um, members and to our customers as well in terms of accessibility to that funding and the way that we have approached um, navigating people through the various support funds that are available to them when they're at the most vulnerable. So round four um, is a 12 month period 70% of it is um, being provided to schools to support those most vulnerable families and children. 27% of it is being allocated for residents who are not directly in receipt of cost of living payments. And um, that will be accessed through navigators in our customer service um, uh, area. And but those um, navigators will also be able to align themselves with our welfare rights and debt advisors. Um, and just 3% of that funding will be used for staffing in order to administer the fund. So um, the families with school aged children will receive the vouchers directly, but we're also um, going to be looking at our older um, our older um, residents who are in receipt of council tax support and they will be contacted directly. Um, and organisations like Age UK and Action Together will also be working with us um, and our carers team to ensure that we capture and we are able to contact people who've not um, been made aware of the funding that is available to them. So we want to ensure that anybody who hasn't been contacted and hasn't been able to draw down this support, we're able to um, support them and contact them and um, uh, help them to draw down the funding that they um, have available to them. We also have our outreach drop-in sessions, which are planned at community venues and um, and also through the existing channels, we'll be able to make contact through social media um, and um, through um, our contacts that we've got through customer services and libraries and helping hands. So essentially um, what we're wanting to do is connect our most vulnerable residents with all the funding that they have available. Those navigators um, will be able to help them through the application process and also maybe advise on whether they can have other funds like um, our resettlement fund or any other benefits that they're due and ensure that we're drawing that down for them. So these are difficult times, but the way that we've listened to you is we've tried to ensure that whatever somebody's issues are, we're able to talk to them and have the um, experience of our welfare rights and our debt advisors connected with our customer services and our household support offices to ensure that anybody who um, is due some additional benef benefit support is able to access that. So um, if you don't mind, I'll stop sharing. And if you've got any questions, happy to take them. Um, have, has anybody got uh, questions for Emma? Uh, I can't see any hands raised, Chair. I've also had a look in the inbox. We've had no uh, email questions from the right. public either. So just one for me then, Emma. Are, are we, um, in terms of, obviously we, we, you're sort of targeting, you know, particular, particular groups on, um, who you'll have on sort of record and, uh, yes. you know, for, for whatever reason. Um, we, uh, it's a, a sort of wider publicity campaign about this within the, within the community. Yes, there will be. We're hoping to roll out from the 5th of July when we've got all our um, um, different, um, as, uh, a different um, staff in place. Um, we'll be putting out our usual tweets and our press releases as well. Um, the money will be re released in four tranches um, to ensure that we've got a good spread across the year. I mean, obviously our, our winter period is some of the hardest periods, so we want to ensure that we stagger that fund well so we cover the whole year. But if, um, if members of the public would like to make um, approaches to our customer services, we will be able to point them in the right direction and we'll also be able to contact them um, and make 
in some cases, individual appointments for them. So they can either come into our um, you know, library and our customer service centre at Tameside One, or for instance, we can make arrangements to meet them perhaps in the library at say George Lawton Hall, um, or um, Staley Bridge Library and help them in a face-to-face -face manner so they don't have to travel. They can, of course, do it online, and we have been doing that online, but we might wanted to make sure that we were opening up that face-to-face -face support as well. Great. That's, that, that's excellent. Fine. So, uh, are we any more um, requests to speak, Ben? Yes, I can see Councillor Beardmore has her hand raised. Yeah. Councillor uh, Beardmore. I just, yeah, I just wanted to, I noticed that you said they were co community venues. I just wondered, wanted to ask Emma where those were and um, how, do we have any input into those? Because I'm um, was... happy for you to suggest any community mm. venues. We do um, have um, our librarians um, have been upskilled in giving some of this support and um, because those are key librarian um, the key community venues those are some of our first places but if you've got a community venue you feel that you want us to meet a member of the public in or or um, have, arrange a few appointments we're happy to to hear from you and are happy to do that I was just I was just thinking, you know, in places like Ridge Hill, where it's difficult mm -hmm. for people to get down to Staley Bridge, actually. Yeah. And we, we've got a, a hub there, which I think would be really, it would be really useful to advertise some of this. And um, I don't know what the other, um, I'm sure there are other areas in, in Staley Bridge as well. I will take that back, Councillor Beardmore. Thank you very thank much. You. And um, yeah, well, we'll look at advertising that. Ideally, we, you know, if we can um, have a few appointments in one place, that makes it more yeah. efficient, if you know what I mean. And of course, some people have chosen to come on for an online appointment, but we also yeah. try and advise them to have all the documentation they need in place to start with. So it's not a wasted journey. So um, you, there are some... Um, documents that's helpful to have ahead of the appointment so if we can make those conversations initially that ensures that our customers aren't um they don't have to um rework that appointment so yeah. it's um, a useful way of doing it okay thank you okay is that uh, is that it ben yeah it is Jay. yes i can't yeah. any further questions. okay that, that's brilliant thanks emma um um, so I'm going to ask the meeting now that um, Emma's also speaking to item seven, um, and I was. Um, oh, it seems to make sense if we bring item seven forward so that um, Emma can um, talk to that and then you know get off in the meeting. Is, are people happy with that? Yes. Okay, fire away then, Emma. We're on. Um, you're on uh, Caddy Liners implementation now, I think. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, trying to, uh, sorry, share my screen. It's not, it's not right. Um, I've, you can see it there, I think. Is that right? You can see. Um, can you see? Yes, sorry, Emma. Yeah, yes, we can sorry. See yes, sorry. Um, so um, I'm afraid um, it's covering um, my the full screen but if you don't mind I'll carry on. So um, the council currently supplies free um, caddy liners, um, compostable caddy liners on request and we did this initially to encourage our residents to compost their food waste and um, to ensure they put their food waste into their brown bin um, with their garden waste um, and the practice of recycling is now well established. You might have seen in the Tameside correspondent, we Tameside has got, had the most improved recycling rate this year, which was great news for us. Um, but although we have provided these previously, they are actually um, uh, a bio waste or they're an, um, an item in our waste that we don't actually need. And um, it's not a statutory requirement for us to provide them. And they're an additional um, item in our recycling that we really don't need. And we are ideally being, um, in, as part of our environmental and our climate change commitment, we'd like to 
um, not to provide these for free of charge anymore, but also to encourage our residents, please could you um, put your food away straight into your plastic caddy liner and instead of having an additional item in there, creating bio waste in the whole system, then transfer your caddy and the contents of your caddy straight into your brown bin. Um, that's the most uh, net zero approach um, to recycling. Obviously, caddy liners, they do have a carbon footprint in their production. They have a carbon footprint in their um, transport to us and then our transport to you. So it is a, um, a bio waste that we don't need to provide. And um, it's also in order for us to not provide it, it also helps us to um, save money for vital services. Um, so in, te in, in, in essence, we are strongly encouraging our households to recycle their food waste directly into their brown bin. And um, those um, caddy line, uh, caddies that people have, have got um, handles, which enable you to go straight out to your outdoor bin and it's um, the ideal situation. Um, if you um, feel that you really can't do that, then caddy liners are available at supermarkets and um, where you would buy your swing bean liners yourself um, and they are available if you, if you want to do that. We are really strongly suggesting, please don't use newspaper or recyclable carrier bags or um, paper towels to line your caddy liner. Those all have a long time, they take a long time to decompost and will contaminate our re excellent recycling and lead to um, wagons being rejected. So um, we, we are very keen that we continue to collect um, food waste and it's a well-established practice. It's very important for us to keep our waste collection at a minimum cost to the, count, um, the council taxpayer, but the provision of liners isn't necessary. And ideally we want to have the, the most ecological, the most environmentally friendly um, recycling system and the best way to do that almost in an old-fashioned traditional way is to take your food waste and put it straight into that compost um, um, brown bin and that's the most um, eco approach so we're encouraging our residents to do that so from the first of June we will be ceasing um, providing free caddy liners and we're hoping that everybody continues to um, do their very best to have the most um, green recycling um, that we have across Greater Manchester. Thanks so much. Okay. Any questions? Any, any questions from people? Uh, I can't see any hands raised, Chair, uh, and there's nothing in the eating box from the public right. either. Chair, quick... I, I haven't got any questions, but I want to say I applaud the fact that we are going to charge for bin liners. I don't think it should be on the council taxpayer. It's, uh, I mean, you buy as Emma said, um, pedal bin liners, uh, and, and they're not, they're really, really not that expensive. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> one, one thing I was going to ask Emma is, um, do you know, have you, a rough idea how much we might save in, on a year by doing this? Um, I think we could save about £170,000. So it's uh, not an inconsiderable amount of money, is no. it really? No, uh, especially with my previous item that I was talking about. So it's a significant issue. So and yeah. can, can I just say, Emma, I've seen them being used for lots of things apart from caddy bin liners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Excuse me, Chair. I did, I did raise my hand quite a while on the previous oh, uh, yeah. agenda okay. item. Yeah, we, we missed yeah. you, Jackie, yeah. Well, you, I know, aren't you lucky? Um, my reception is really bad, actually. Um, just a, um, a quick one for Emma uh, regarding the previous item about uh, people to be able to get the help they need in different ups. Um, we we would need something in Duck and Field because it, um, obviously to travel to whether it be um, Ashton, Mosley or whatever takes um, a bus ride. But in some circumstances, we have areas in um ducking field that don't even have local transport you've got to walk to get to ashton and to get to stale the bridge 
So um, um, I want to put forward the Together Centre, but not only that, because we're dealing with vulnerable people and people in isolation, are we providing a service mm. where we will uh, go to them, make an appointment and go to their home? Yes. Um, right. So that, that's my question. And if you could put forward that like, perhaps getting in touch with the, the Together Centre um, as well as Duckingfield Library, because obviously the it's limited staff at Duckingfield Library. So I want to make sure that obviously the, the residents of Duckingfield are covered as well. Oh, that, that's great. Thanks for that, Councillor Lane. And I, I think it adds to the point that um, Councillor Beardmore made regarding the uh, areas of Ridge Hill as well, in a sort of similar sort of issues. And Carbrook. And Carbrook. And Carbrook, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, Chair, 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 yeah. Chair, 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 yeah, I've got a question. This might sound a bit daft, but, you know, um, it's for Emma, really. We put our food waste straight into the brown bin uh, and we always have. But I have to say, it's not the most pleasant thing to have outside your house. And I wonder, do, do you offer a service to slush them out, even if people had to pay for it? I have to say we don't offer that service um, mm. and it would be quite um, labour intensive. I know yeah, there are yeah. enterprising people that do do that. Right, okay. um, so I would have a look at that. Um, yeah. We are very fortunate in Tameside that we have a weekly brown bin um, where mm. we can um, collection in other authorities. It's, it's um, fortnightly. So yeah. whilst it is... Um, Keeping that lid down does really um, suppress the odours. I know it's not yeah. pleasant, um, no. but but in, yeah, it's great that people, so many people, do recycle their food waste, and we're just really glad that yeah. they do. So thank you very much. Yes. Can, can I also come in, Chair, and just say a, yeah. an awful lot of authorities charge for brown bin collections? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Uh, so is that a storm with item well five and four and seven then uh, any more hands up then uh, there aren't chair no no okay so emma thank you for those two items and um remember the promise that you made to state ridge council north councillors that you answer our email straight away for <laughs> <Yes>. um, letting <laughs> you go on <laughs> oh, thank you items. very much appreciate it councillor yeah, yes thank we'll hold you, you to that <laughs> Bye. Uh, um okay um so we're, we're on to item well it'll be item six which is was item five which is around um fostering and um oh, i've forgotten who's going to do this oh, sorry about that it's linda um, linda clifford yes do you want to introduce yourself and um then uh, take the item forward Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pearce. My name's Linda Clifford. I'm the service manager for the fostering service at Tameside. And thank you for having me this evening. I'm hoping I can share my screen. Can you see it, Ben? Is it on? Yes, yep. we can, Linda. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think we came um, to the meeting about six months ago when you invited us. So I'm doing uh, an update this evening, if that's OK. Yeah. Um, so um, just on fostering for those um, that aren't aware, it's, it's to offer support and care for children when they're not able to live uh, with their parents or with a family member. And um, it's providing that stable and caring um, environment for them. And um, it says contact there. We no longer call it contact. We call it family time. So we'd uh, hope foster carers could support with that family time with birth family, uh, birth parents or any other connected persons. And obviously, if the child's school age, it's an expectation that we'd support with getting the children to school and attending meetings and appointments. And most of all, training to support foster carers to do that role. Anyone can foster uh, married, cohabiting, single, straight or gay. There's no upper age limit. At the moment, we've got our demographic is a, quite an elderly um, cohort of foster carers who are able to meet our most vulnerable children's needs. Uh, we do hope, uh, expect you to have your, uh, a spare bedroom, though. 
Ideally, we want children to remain in the Thameside area, so we'd hope people live locally um, and all ethnic and religious backgrounds are very welcome. Um, we provide a lot of support, ongoing support, and that's tailored to you as a foster carer. Uh, we've currently got a training coordinators uh, vacancy out for advert at the moment. And the hope is that that person who fills that role will uh, identify bespoke training and support for each of our foster carers. Um, and quite a lot of our foster carers, uh, our experienced foster carers, op offer a buddy system as well. Um, we need um, lots of different foster carers, short term, long term, uh, from the age of uh, 0 to 18. If I tell you today, we've got three vacancies, three foster households that have a vacancy at the moment, and we have no baby carers in Thameside, internally in Thameside. Um, our sufficiency is really low, and we're hoping um, that um, yourselves will be able to support us in promoting uh, this desperate need, which is a national problem, but as Thameside, it's really hitting us. OK, so I'm hoping you can help us by word of mouth. Um, if you know anybody who can support us, uh, put them in touch with us uh, and share our materials. Our marketing and recruitment officer has sent a link through to Ben. Uh, ben, if you're able to share it. And if anyone's familiar with tweets and social media, if you can just share it on the back of that, that would really help to get the message of Thameside out and we'd really appreciate that. Um, we've joined with the Greater Manchester um, 10 local authorities and they've come up with a brand across Greater Manchester called Fostering Unfiltered. These are some of the adverts uh, that you may see around. Uh, it's using real foster carers but staff's children um, because obviously we can't put our vulnerable children on um, photographs. A lot of um, Thameside foster carers um, are joining in and supporting this um, uh, programme. So we're really hoping that with foster care, real foster carers telling their story um, and answering um, any potential inquirers um, questions, that, that will help us in the support of recruiting more foster carers. We've recently had foster care fortnight um, and I don't know if you saw the ADFAM in Ashton and Crown Point uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was lent from uh, the Greater Manchester. It went across all GMs over that fortnight. We also uh, took over two park run events, one in Hyde and one in Stamford Park. Uh, as you can see from the photographs, there was quite a few councillors uh, that came. Um, Ali was there, and Tony as our AD was there. And I have to say, it was a great event, um, just having those conversations and promoting uh, fostering. And since Foster Care Fortnight, um, we're, we're just so pleased we've had five inquiries, which we're hoping over a period of assessment, we'll be able to convert those into fostering vacancies. We also have six foster care ambassadors now, so six of our experienced foster carers volunteered themselves um, to go and um, promote fostering in Thameside. That might be in a soft play or they'll know of a coffee morning or um, may ask Costa Coffee or Morrison's if they can go and put their uh, banner up there and just talk to people to try and again get those conversations going. Uh, we've also launched our stay in put policy in February. This is where young people get to the age of 18 and they want to remain in their fostering household. That then converts to what we call a stay in put arrangement. Uh, the, the carer gets paid, not as much as a fostering allowance, but it's, it's relevant to what that young person will receive in their own benefits and housing benefit as well. And the, the hope is from research, we know that our young people get better outcomes if they can stay within that nurturing environment and learning those life skills that many of us have taught our own children, uh, which prepares them for independence. 
Um, we have got currently, we've got a couple of our young people in Tameside that have chosen to stay in port and are at university while remaining in that household. A couple of our young people are residing in university accommodation, but they've kept that bedroom open as a stay and put arrangement for their vacation. Um, and we've also got young people on stay and put who are in college or who are working. Um, and this is really successful because, well, A, we know there's a housing shortage, but B, we're really preparing those young people uh, for independence. We're preparing them to budget, to cook, and to do all those life skills that we, we ourselves have learned along the way. Uh, equally, we're launching a supported lodgings policy where young people may not have had the uh, benefit of foster care, they may have been in residential care, but they're not ready for independence either. So it's similar to a stay in put arrangement, but the household is new to them and they can support them into independence as well, much the same as the stay in put policy. Um, we want our young people to thrive in independence. And we from research. No, you can't hold on, I'm in a meeting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we know from research our young people will thrive if they're in that supportive environment. Um, also, what's not on the slide just before I finish, Tameside is uh, one of the Greater Manchester authorities that will shortly be launching our Opta Friendly Authority. Um, and there's a lot of interference there, I'm struggling. Sorry, Chek, we just make sure that all everyone has their microphone muted, uh, please. Uh, uh, muted, yeah. Muted. Um, yeah, uh, uh, well, you heard what Ben said. Um, so if you, if you could uh, make sure your microphone's muted while the items are on, that'd be good. Thank you. Um, Tameside is launching their foster friendly authority uh, very shortly. This means that anyone who uh, fosters and works for the local authority, they'll be allocated um, days to attend meetings and to attend training and to support that young person in that transition period of uh, joining that foster care household. Um, Tameside um, uh, offering more than most local authorities in those days for training. So I think that's going to be a huge uh, support for us in our recruitment. Uh, that's the hope. Uh, earlier in the uh, meeting, I heard you mention Ridge Hill. And I just want to uh, let you all know that today we provisionally booked um, sessions at the four family hubs. So um, the, there's two in the holidays, which we hope to have foster families, birth families and cared for children at an activities event at the family hubs. And just letting our um, foster carers know what the local offer is, because there may be uh, support there that they're not aware of. And then uh, we're going to Ridge Hill, hopefully on the 3rd of August. Um, and hopefully it will attract people who want to find out more about uh, caring, fostering in Tameside. So thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any questions. So anybody, any questions? Uh, I can't see any hands uh, raised, Chair. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Sweet, I think, has a question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more of an observation, really. Um, I'll, I'll, this is an absolute critical piece of work for any local authority. But uh, about 10 years ago, some um, family friends of my mum and dad um, were, were fostering children for uh, Manchester, the city of Manchester, and, and they're Duckingfield based. And, and they were both professional, both lovely, lovely people. But apparently they'd applied to, to um, Tameside and been rejected, whatever the criteria was. But yet Manchester gave them several um, children over the course. They've retired now um, and, and, and they left the, the, the Manchester with, with an exemplary record. They weren't alone. I, talking with them, they were aware of other, other families that wanted 
but they couldn't understand what the criteria was and why they were being rejected. And I always couldn't fathom out when we're so desperate why we were losing obviously good families and, there were, and other authorities were picking them up. Have we addressed this? And surely we were aware of it. Councillor Sweden, I can't answer for the past. I can tell you I've been in post for just over a year now. And um, I would want to know anything current uh, where that practice was going on, because I'd want to understand the reasons for that. Um, I, I make myself very available to our foster carers and part of the recruitment and part of the training and skills to foster. Um, I value our foster carers and any potential carers. So I will be very concerned if there wasn't a valid reason for that. Maybe that's something that you can uh, have a conversation with Councillor Sweeten with, um, you know, if, if you've got detailed sort of experience there, Dave, which might not be appropriate to share, you know, in a, in a more public forum. Um, maybe that's something you could do, um, which would further, you know, I'd, I'd uh, be more understanding. Than happy to talk to you outside the meeting. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, yeah, that's fine, Adrian. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, one sort of just observation for me, uh, Linda, is um, you mentioned Ridge Hill. Um, we've um, uh, two things really. Um, uh, during the summer, there's a, there's a um, holiday club which is run by the um, big local and social enterprise up there, um, which, which gathers together sort of about I, I think it can be up to forty children. Um, so it may be a, a, a place where you could um, you sort of meet families and, um, you know, discuss sort of or you make you well or, you know, make yourself this idea available to them. That, um, that would be great. Yeah, thank you. But, uh, and the other thing, but the thing generally, I think, is, you know, if you've got an event at the Family Hub, I'd really welcome it if you did involve the sort of um, particularly the coordinator of the big local so that you can liaise with with her in any sort of work or publicity you wanted to do generally on um, Rich Hill and um, beyond. So um, I think, so. you know, we've got an opportunity at least for the next year while, um, while she's in place. So uh, I think it'd be good to take advantage of it if we could. Yeah, thank you. Um, have we any other points that people want to raise? Uh, I can see Ali has her hand raised, Chair. Yeah, uh, fire away. Um, yeah, firstly, can I just thank Linda for a really clear uh, and articulate presentation. Um, and I cannot tell you, members, the, the energy and the effort that is going in at the moment to look to recruit foster carers. Uh, and so critical is it in terms of our children. Um, we, we, we had a really sad situation only last week where we were struggling to find a placement for a cot bed for a tiny baby. And that has never been heard of for years here because tiny babies are always very, well, they don't take up an awful lot of space. Um, they need an awful lot of love, but they don't take up an awful lot of space. But we, we managed it in the end, but it was a real struggle. And that just gives you a sense of the challenges because some of our foster carers are getting older and they're aging and they're looking to retire uh, after an amazing lifetime of service. Um, so um, just to stress that importance, if you do know anybody, I think what you described 10 years ago, Councillor Sweeten, is not how it is now. And it's not how it is now in, in many authorities. And that comparable set of standards across Greater Manchester was nowhere near where, where your um, family friends were at um, when they went through the process. We've really modernised and brought it up to date because our children need better and they deserve better so a plea not to kind of reflect on maybe what was 10 years ago and to kind of really invest some time and thought in those who may be thinking about career change may want to support their kind of family and stay at home and be at home and offer that lifeline to children who really really need it sorry I'm dead passionate about this but um but it, it, it you you unlock you you hold the keys to some of this as elected members you're already representatives of your community, you've got that trust and confidence. Um, so please do all you can, and I know you do. Um, I'm just asking you to do a little bit more. Thank you, uh, Chair. Thanks, thanks for that. No, that's a very important point. Um, 
Is there any other issues? Uh, any other point? Uh, any other members? Then want Councillor Bidmore has her hand raised. Yeah. Bidmore. And Sorry, um, well. I, I just wanted to ask Linda, and um, is there a particular reason why um, there's a lack of carers for babies? Is do, is that just? No, I just think there's a national shortage. Is there? Um, yeah, it's not just Tameside. No. It's, it's across, it's nationally. Um, mm. People, I think probably Ali touched on it, but the demographics, there's older foster carers who want to retire. Mm. I think there's concerns about the cost of living. Um, you know, I mean, I was talking, I was at a conference in Greater Manchester last week and some councils offer reduced council tax to attract foster carers, you know, and that's that it's some there's things we need to consider to try and attract uh, that same cohort really. Mm. Um, because people can't always work when they look after babies, you know, they've got mm. to be there. So, so that's a huge ask, isn't it? With the cost yeah. of the fuel. Yeah. Um, but I mean, when I joined Tameside nearly three years ago, we had too many, if you can have too many foster carers for babies, um, you know, and they were, they were almost fighting over the next baby. Mm. Whereas now we just, I know we've had, Certainly the last couple of months, we've had quite a few relinquished babies, which has put a lot of pressure on the service. Oh, oh um, but yeah, mm. yeah, as, as Ali said, it's just been really, really sad mm. working in fostering at the moment when we can't mm. find homes for any age. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank, thanks for that. Anybody I else also been? just add one thing, forgive me, Chair. There's also something just to mention. Um, yeah. Tameside has increased the foster care allowance in line with an uplift of in, in, uh, in funding that we've received from central government. So um, we did, we did uh, uplift by 12% this year to meet that cost of living. So again, if you are talking to, to, to your um, constituents and they're saying they might be interested, we have made it more financially attractive but I'm pretty sure there's other things we can do as a council. Um, so again, for you to be the advocates for some of that and give us some ideas, always open to suggestions, always. I mean, it, it, you mentioned that, and that's really important, I think. Um, uh, it, would you also, when, when if somebody were thinking of fostering, would you sort of, you, you'd be able, presumably, to help them in terms of with their with looking at their total financial package and their sort of their finances generally you'd be able to could you give assistance with that to make sure they are claiming what they can they're, what they're entitled to you know that uh, and what and whatever we could support them with a welfare rights appointment to make sure i mean as as you're aware benefits and allowances change almost daily yeah yeah, um, yeah so we could have um, redirect them to welfare rights yeah good okay so uh, sharif as well Council oh yeah uh, Council sharif yeah chair thank you so much i uh, profoundly apologize for the earlier distraction um, oh, it's, I'm, it's looking to don't, don't I'm looking don't forward to in-person. I'm looking forward to in-person meetings, and I won't be chased by uh, poor children. <laughs> 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 I wanted to ask, um, Ali. Thank you so much for mentioning about the pay, because I have had a couple of um, long-term foster carers mention that to me, stating um, Oldham's. Uh, pay package is far better and we don't feel valued and it was something I was meant to raise uh, a few weeks ago and I didn't so um, can I have a, maybe a separate I don't know if there's anything to mention now around uh, while it's a public meeting around Oldham rate, Oldham's rates and our rates and if we've put ours up can that be um, can that message kind of go out to as many people obviously we will do ours our best as well but to as many people as many of our foster carers and as many people as possible because only a few weeks ago, I had a, a couple of um, um, foster carers speaking to me about it. So the uplift has been a universal uplift at the same rate, and it's gone across all local authorities and all GM right. authorities have raised rates at the same rate. I think there may be a bit of a difference in timing in terms of decision making process and different council's uh, decision-making process around that. Um, we were quite uh, canny in that our 151 officer included it within the MTFS and that decision-making process. So 
on, a, on an individual cases that 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 has been um, uh, calculated and communicated uh, with 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 our carers. Um, in terms of um, where we work collaboratively, so that we've not got that kind of disincentive, and um, so we're getting to competition with each other because that's not helpful mm -hmm. for anybody, um, particularly our children. Um, uh, to be honest, that's not where the competition is for us. The competition with is, it is with uh, independent fostering agencies. So we do have private sector fostering companies who will charge local authorities a premium and they will put an awful lot more time, effort, energy, money into the recruitment process and marketing and all the things that, you know, we, we, we are not always best placed to do as local uh, local authorities, but, but they are because they are money making machines and they operate for profit. Um, and rightly or wrongly, that kind of uh, commercialism is part of the market. So some foster carers may choose to go for with a kind of commercial independent fostering agency and they operate in all parts of Greater Manchester and beyond. So um, I, I hope that answers your question, Councillor Sharif, but I'm always happy to have a conversation with you about that. Course. Yeah, thank you, Ali. That does answer in part, but I think I'll uh, drop you an email with, with some of the other little bits of information that came through and then we can get that clarified. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Jeff. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> any, anybody else? Uh, I can't see any further hands up, Chair. Okay. Right. Well, can I can I thank Linda and Ali for, for the um, uh, really, really, interest, really interesting points you've made and ask everybody to further their efforts to um, help the service in terms of publicising what they do and um, it, it, encouraging people or, you know, or to sort of to think about whether that may be an option for them. Um, so obviously, uh, I was able to attend my first corporate parenting board um, recently and the figures for um, you know people who looked after children and uh, um, remain obstinately higher um, I think it's around 660 or something and it's an awful lot of um, um, you know people that we've we've got to support and um, uh, obviously we, we need a lot of people to do that so if you can go away and have a think about that that'd be really good thank you. okay thank you all um and we're on to our, our final item, um, item six, which is now seven, uh, shift. And I think we've got um, Matthew and is it Jane to talk on that? It is. Good evening, everybody. Sorry, Jane, you'll just need to unmute your microphone. Thank you, Ben. Sorry. Um, apologies. Councillor Pierce, can I just introduce myself, please? Because I'm, I'm relatively... Yeah, sure. Same side. So my name is Jane Darrington. I'm um, interim head of adolescent services um, in Thameside. Um, so it's it's lovely to be here for the first meeting. It's nice to meet you all. So 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 Matthew um, Morris Jones is obviously here, and Matthew's um, the lead for Shift. So Matthew will be able to give you some real detail in terms of what Shift can offer and what that project is about. Okay. Thanks, Jane. Uh, just going to share my screen. Everybody able to see that? Okay. Yes, but I think yeah, you just on yeah. Okay. Uh, wait me a second. So, uh, as Jane has said, Jane, um, newly in post, my, my name is Matthew Morris Jones, I'm the shift lead guide. Um, my background is in child protection. I was a team manager within the Thameside um, locality um, teams. Uh, I was there for uh, three years. Uh, this was a position uh, that came up as a secondment, uh, and uh, I've been in post since January. Um, Shift uh, is uh, an incredible, innovative project that um, Thameside have been um, really sort of fortunate and, and sort of the foresight, uh, you know, is, is quite uh, outstanding, really. Um, the reasons uh, for 
uh, a project such as Shift, which I'll come on to, uh, you know, all about Shift uh, later on in the slides, is um, we're part of obviously the Greater Manchester Adolescent Safeguarding Framework. What what the what the the reason behind this is the fact that it has been felt for some time that. Um, the services being offered to certainly adolescents uh, and those um, you know sort of uh, of an age are not appropriate and are not working uh, for those young people, children and young people who are suffering from harm, uh, and that would be outside of the family home, so through sort of gang. Uh, gang violence, through serious violent, violent crimes, um, through uh, sort of sexual exploitation and things like that. And whilst we have, have seen some support services in, there is still that sort of uh, thought around, um, you know, they're not seeing these young people as victims. They're not seeing these young people as people who are being harmed, but rather as a sort of... Um, you know, criminals themselves. Um, you can only go back to things like the Rochdale cases and things like that, where, you know, uh, those young girls were, were named as, as sort of prostitutes and things like that. So this GM um, adolescent framework is, is significant. Um, there's, there's so much going on across the Greater Manchester area. And like I say, Tameside uh, luckily um, have had the foresight to uh, accept SHIFT as a project. Um, now, shift, um, as we say, it exists to break the destructive cycle. Um, as we say, there's a lot of things going on for these young people. Shift is a project, it's one of many, um, that is looking at changing the work with young people. We are very fortunate in the fact that uh, we are a small team. Uh, I'll come on to the shift team side team. Um, we work with young people up to 25 who are caught in the cycles of harm. We look to break those cycles. Um, Sophie Humphreys was the founder of Shift, who has come from a background where um, she developed um, an organization called Pause, which was for um, mothers who have had multiple um, children removed and trying to support them in becoming mothers and, and helping them through that cycle. So it's breaking the cycles. Often we don't look at breaking cycles, we just look, put a sticky plaster over it and we hope for the best. Um, and, you know, and even the sort of child protection procedures and things like that don't really identify extra familial harm, which is something that's another concern. And once again, for Greater Manchester, they're looking to adapt that where, you know, a young person's plan would probably be developed. And I believe that Tameside is one of the sort of pilots in terms of that. Um, so uh, once again, ahead, being ahead of the curve. Our, our guides, they, they, they're tenacious, they're flexible, and what they are, more importantly, is not bound by sort of frameworks. Um, there's, they, they, they find ways to get alongside the young people, to work with them, to support them um, in, in many ways that other professionals have been unable to do. We're not bound by, you, you know, this sort of legislation in terms of having to see children and young people. We can, um, you know, sort of partake in activities with them. We're really getting alongside them. We're learning about them. And through that trusted relationship, they can be able to explore really why they're developing these risky relationships, why they feel they're being exploited. And actually the term exploitation, um, you know, they, they, they will deny that a lot of the youngsters but um you know as they feel that they're sort of the masters of their own destiny if you like uh, and we we alongside them uh, and spend a long time with them learn to unpick that and work hard with them um, we understand the professional network professional relationships are difficult uh, and we're looking to support them in any means that we can we have a shift national, shift national. Um, so uh, first off, based in London, we they have two services, two projects, one in Bexley uh, and one in Greenwich, and their headquarters is in the Corum building. Um, so we have a lot of support from shift national. Um, they are very much 
looking uh, at us as one of the leads in Greater Manchester. There are discussions around other projects coming into the Greater Manchester area, but we're very much in terms of being seen as the lead, uh, which again is a very, you know, is a positive position to be in. Uh, but there's been a lot of learning. Um, as I say, we only started in January uh, and February of this year. So uh, again, we're, we're learning a lot as we, as we go on. And given that there's only been two projects um, so far in the UK, you know, um, that says a lot, really. Uh, again, um, we touched on the relation, uh, relational approach. Part of the shift model is to try and do away with a number of professionals that these young people are working with or associated with. Often, as we say in serious case reviews and things like that, there's a number of professionals involved that might not be communicating we know this this sort of arena is is quite flooded, um, but we're looking to to work alongside the likes of sort of complex safeguarding, um, uh, you know, um, and and works with youth justice, working with children's services, and what we're going to try to do eventually is bring that white noise down for the children and make sure that they're um, able to turn to one trusted individual but have a group of trusted individuals that they can they can work alongside uh, as i say we've um we've now commenced in um in in our posts in our work uh, many of us have, were seconded from the team side from family support um we've got one uh stephen woolley who's uh, got you know, bags of youth justice um uh, experience myself as a team manager in child protection so we'll, we've all come with different uh, expertise like I say expertise loosely uh, but you know we all have that, that that knowledge and understanding from different worlds which is really going to help that team um, you know have that sort of breadth of, of knowledge um, Sally Dickens uh, a name some of you may know uh, it was the uh, head of service uh, previously who's now just left her post. However, will be taking on a consultancy role with Shift um, uh, because she was so embedded in, in this um, service. Uh, we had a, a huge sort of triage and a, a huge um, sort of uh, information sharing of what the Shift project could do. Um, and we were very fortunate that there was a lot of buy-in from our partners, from children's services, from youth justice, from education. And we were, I, th I think there was about 116 children and young people that were put through uh, for consideration. Um, that really shows that Tameside, uh, you know, valued uh, the service. They, they, they looked at it and thought, actually, that looks a really good service but it also showed what the gap was these young people needed that support um we were looking at you know their their previous experience we were looking at uh, their education systems uh, we were looking at any involvement with youth justice and where they sat within children's services as i've said um, a key factor when working with these children and uh, I apologize if I'm going too fast, slow me down or ask me any questions uh, um, uh, as, as, as we go on. But the key matter with these children and young people is that they have suffered with adverse childhood experiences, something um, that we cannot deny, something that we don't shy away from. Uh, and often these can be forgotten when we're working in systems. Uh, we work in these systems and, and these children, and young people can be vilified. They can be looked at as oh, the regular missing from homes, the ones that are selling drugs or whatever it is. Um, but what we have to do is remember at the heart of it, these children and young people have suffered and they've suffered trauma within their lives, which are leading them to uh, behave in these ways. Um, We've really got to look at that. Those adverse childhood experiences and, and how we do that is through a trauma-informed practice. So we're not looking at the sort of behaviours, we're looking at the reasons behind the behaviours, trying to work with them, getting to know them. And as we say in psychology, you need about 15 sessions or 15 hours working with a young person before they, you know, before they start to trust you. And that's something we're fortunate enough to do. Um, we have... We're sat uh, in Clarence Arcade in, in lovely Ashton, um, uh, but we do obviously cover the four areas, including yourselves. 
We're working with 27 young children and young people at the minute. There's five of us. Uh, there's Eva, Louisa, Robin, and as I said, Stephen. Um, I am the lead guide and I'm working with three young people myself. Uh, and what that does, it gives, you know, often managers, they can be quite removed from practice. This has given me an insight into how we can develop the services. Uh, it's not carte blanche. We, we, we are developing as we go and we're looking to extend. We're looking to look at how we can support the wider networks. So whether that's <clears throat> meeting in, in one of the Prus in Whitebridge, uh, which is a school, you know, we work closely with and, 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 and making those links. Um, I will be giving a talk to Children's Services in one of their Stop the Clocks and things like that. So we're really trying to embed our involvement as much as we can. Um, as I say, we're working with 27. We're just coming out of the phase now of, of engagement. We've been very fortunate. We've been able to take young people go-karting. I'm taking a young person kickboxing, uh, and I'm feeling the pain of that. Every, every inch of me is hurting. I'm not the young person that can do those, those, those youth services anymore. Uh, but, you know, what that's doing is breaking down barriers. I'm able to talk to him. He's, he's a Droylsden young person. Lots of incidents have, got, have gone on, as I'm sure you saw in the media. But I was able to really, you know, bed down and talk about the knife crime, the fact that he was looking to carry uh, and what he means by that is carry a knife because of the issues around those areas. So we're, we're fortunate that we're able to highlight those sort of areas. As I said, we've got 14 really engaged well now. Uh, we've got six tentatively engaging. Um, we've got two that we've had to swap because of uh, family links in terms of um, the young people that we're working with and the clashes. And we've got five who are just just causing us a little bit of a headache at the minute in terms of not wishing to engage, whether that's because they don't want us in their private lives, whether that's because they feel that they, they don't wish for any more support because they've had so much support in their lives. Um, we're, we're still unpicking that. And what we've got to do now is, is have a discussion in terms of how do we change that approach? How do we work with them differently? How do we look to engage them in a way that probably they haven't been engaged before? We'll sit alongside the mother, the father, we'll sit alongside a sibling perhaps, um, but any ways that we can work with that young person, we are trying to do. I'm working with a young person who doesn't really want to engage. I've had to look at sort of CAMS. He has, um, he, you know, sort of it's a neurodivergence as well. So it's a young person who, who has uh, autism. Uh, and, and I'm trying to look at ways of managing that and, and, and ways that um, he may not have been at work before. He's been out of education for a very long time, which again is a trend that we're seeing. And what we're able to do working across these 27 and across Thameside is see the trends, see the professional trends. And we're able to highlight that. We're very fortunate of the buy-in we have with, with, with Ali, with, 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 I know Tony was part of a steering group where Shift is heavily involved. And, and, and you know, the London organisations are looking at us quite jealously actually at the buy-in from the top which again um, you know says it all and, and to have the opportunity to come and share this information with yourselves as well uh, it, it really shows that you know shift is is, is moving somewhat um, again th there's our contacts I, I really really do welcome communications discussions I really you know um, Staley Bridge again was part of Pate covered. Uh, I understand the area. I like to understand the area. And, you know, and if there's anything else you require from shift, whether that be a, a, maybe a workshop down down in, in, in sort of in your consistency, consistency or whatever uh, you feel necessary, I'm more than happy to try and support on that. Um, Jane, that's me. I don't know if you've got anything you'd like to add in terms of the frameworks, but I'd like to th again, thank you very much for your time. Um, and it was really interesting to sit from the, for the whole of the meeting, actually. Uh, it's quite fortunate and don't really get these opportunities. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you, Councillor Pierce. I think we've finished the presentation. Uh, OK. Um, well, no, it's very interesting. Um, thank you, Matthew. And thanks, Jane, for supporting it. Um, Ben, have we have we questions? Uh, I can't see any hands raised, Chair. Yeah, um, just one for me then. So, um, in terms of the um, other organisations you're working with, uh, I mean, presumably you're working with um, 
other youth organisations and other sort of voluntary community sort of groups and um, organisations. Would, would that be correct? Is Yes. Yeah. Obviously, we have to we have to sort of share our, our wealth, if you like. Um, we're fortunate to be sat within the Youth Justice Office and, as I say, Children's Services, etc. But yeah, we, we're definitely so. Um, like I say, um, a young person I'm taking kickboxing is from 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 a, a service in Troilstown. We've we've looked into the fire service. There's the Salford football. There's there's a lot of football clubs, as you may know, in Manchester. I did see one of the councillors of the Manchester City top. And we won't judge there um but no there was there was there was many um yeah there, there are many agencies we're unpicking many as well and, and you know like we say when we do get these sort of adolescent hubs or these sort of family hubs and things like that we want to be you know be part of that and know the fabric of these services because as you say we want these young people to be able to access it uh, and we'll know the threads as well of what's lacking out there, you know, youth services and things like that and, and how those services possibly have been cut um, because youth services seem to be the first services that always seem, well, that's what the youth workers will tell you. But it's how we how we look to, to develop those within our communities because community trauma is massive. Um, you know, community trauma is, is, is significant in this work. And if we don't understand the worlds in which these young people are working in, we might as well pack up now so it's learning yeah. where they are where they're going and how we can work with with those areas as well thank you for that um if we anybody else want to contribute uh, okay. i can't see any hand raised okay well can i thank you um thank you matthew for that um and can i just encourage people to take up matthew's offer and um sort of engage with the shift project and um perhaps discover a bit more about what it, how it affects them in their area so um yeah thank I'd, you sorry to interrupt that i'd welcome any communications in terms of you know where you see your problem areas or your young people yeah. any sort of inside insider knowledge you, you guys will, will be hearing a lot so uh you know i welcome any communications outside this meeting i'd be, I'd be thankful for it okay thank you very much um then um, on to our next slide, my item eight, our final item. Our next meeting, it's um, October, isn't it? That's correct, Chair, yeah, yes. Uh, the, um, I think yeah. it's the 11th of October. Yes, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is, yeah. Okay, well, um, can I just thank everybody who's contributed tonight, um, or the people who presented, and um, members who've made some really interesting um really interesting contributions and um i just want to report that the oxygen's lasting out pretty well here in staley bridge but before it doesn't i better close the meeting and um welcome everybody back in uh october so thank, thank you, you thank you thank you